Cleveland Golden was born in New Orleans, the eldest of two sons. He served four years in the U.S. Navy during the Korean War, and while home on leave, met Stella Dusan, whose family lived across the street from his parents. I liked his character. I liked the person he was. And I would think, that's the kind of man I want to marry, you know. Roland and Stella were married in 1957 and moved into the French Quarter, where he established a studio at 624 Royal Street. With work and home within the unique community of the Vieux Carré, the couple reared three children. He studied, of course, for a number of years with a, a wonderful artist, uh, John McCready, who lived in the French Quarter, had an art school there for a number of years, and Roland was one of his outstanding uh, students and protégés. His subject matter included drawings of the French Quarter and jazz musicians that were popular with tourists. But a turning point came when Vincent Price, representing the Sears Traveling Art Program, made some major purchases. This financial security allowed Golden to branch out to other themes. I first met Roland in 1980. I was a reporter for the Times-Picayune, a staff writer for the Picayune. I just truly enjoyed his work. He paints the everyday world around you, the ordinary. It's the, the minutia of life that you see. In fact, what he does is he teaches you how to see the world around you. He's dedicated to going into the studio and working every day. He's worked in many different themes over the years. One of the first ones I saw was a whole series of paintings he did of New Orleans, downtown area, demolition. It did kind of raise some eyebrows among chamber members that uh, he was concentrating on the old rather than, than celebrating the new. The Goldens have always been civically active. One of the first issues they became involved in was opposition to a proposed expressway along the New Orleans riverfront. He did drawings for the Via Carre Courier, and uh, it would be satirical in a way. And you would have these ramps coming down, like right by the St. Louis Cathedral. In the 1960s and early 70s, the Vietnam War struck a chord in Golden's work. Always fascinated with history and the Civil War, he developed figural paintings with a poignant message. Unlike any other Civil War statue or monument to Confederate soldiers or Union soldiers or battle scenes that you've ever seen, but there were statues across battlefields with blood dripping from the arms or from the bayonets to make it really real to today's audience. That war is really about people and blood, and this came through very strongly in that series. One of the highlights of his early career came in 1976 when Golden was chosen among thousands of American artists to represent the U.S. in a one-man show, the very first to tour the USSR. As Roland's work reached a wider audience, the Goldens began traveling regularly to New York and the East Coast, summering at Cape Cod and making trips to Paris and the south of France. In each locale, Roland brought a passion for his work expressed in landscapes and abstract interpretations that incorporated elements of surrealism. The Goldens moved from New Orleans to Folsom, Louisiana, north of Lake Pontchartrain. It was here that they rode out Hurricane Katrina. The devastation of his beloved city became the focus of a powerfully emotional series of paintings. I think those paintings serve for him as a way of working his own personal trauma out of his inner self and onto the canvas. Throughout his career, Roland and Stella have worked as a team. An artist really doesn't have time to create the work and then promote it and publicize it himself. He needs someone, often it's a gallery who'll do that, or it is often the spouse, whether it's a husband or a wife, who take on that role, and Stella is a master at it. So uh, that's sort of Roland's secret weapon. Much of his work, whether you're looking at the back rows of Louisiana with an old sharecropper shack, or his series on the Mississippi River, or his series on the Civil War, or his Katrina paintings, and everything else that he's done is imbued with, in essence, the history of Louisiana. From those beginnings in a small French Quarter studio, Roland Golden has developed a body of work that represents his passion and dedication to a life in the arts. Hello, I'm Beth Courtney. Welcome to Louisiana Legends. We're here with Roland Golden in Folsom, Louisiana, in a wonderful uh, home in the country, surrounded by your art. And uh, thank you so much for letting us come be at your home, Roland. Well, it's my pleasure, and I'm glad to have you. Well, you, uh, I loved 
the uh, celebratory nature of the Legends event, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. I did. I, I, I was surprised. I actually enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, we've seen that you um, are a prolific painter, and do you just get up every morning in this wonderful setting and, and paint? Do you just love painting? I love to paint, and I, I, I always have something to do. I, there's, I'm never without a subject matter that I want to paint. So, you know, I'm fortunate like that. Well, I know that uh, we have some of your paintings uh, behind us, mm -hmm. and I see that you especially like cows. Tell us about that. I do that. like cows. Why well, is that? <laughs> cows are usually still. <laughs> They're right. not like horses. They don't run that much and all. So I, I, I just like cows. I don't know why. I just have been partial to them all my life. Do you remember the first time you started painting anything? How old were you? Do you remember that? I was, well, my dad was talented but he was working for at and and he didn't get to pursue that career. And so I don't ever remember not having a pencil. You know, even when I was a three years old, I was on the floor drawing and things. Like that. So I've always been involved in art in one way or another. The only time I wasn't was when I went in the Navy for four years. And uh, when I got out, I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do with myself. I said, well, I think I'll just pursue an art career. So I've been fortunate. That is fortunate to be able to do something as a career that you really love. That's true. Uh, I, I think a lot of people don't do that. Do That's true, but I, I, I had a, I opened a place on Wall Street back on the patio, and I was in there for 10 years where I sold my paintings and things like that, and eventually I was signed to a contract by somebody, and here I am. Well, what was it like living in the French Quarter? A lot of people think it's romantic, but it's also a little challenging, right? Uh, it is challenging, but living in a four, quarter, I don't think it's the same now as it was when we lived mm. there. I mean, we was, we're talking about 30 years ago, but uh, it was full of unusual people. <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed the quarter. I, would, I mean, I would go back in a minute, but my wife doesn't want to go back. So that oh, well. recruits me from going. And your wife was a, is a wonderful marketer. Your whole family's been involved in yes, your career. Yes, they are. Yes, Lucille was involved, and uh, she will probably carry on when I'm gone. So. Well, you know, as we sit here in this your lovely home out in the in the country in Folsom, outside of New Orleans, we are really celebrating, not celebrating, we're commemorating the 10th anniversary of uh, Katrina. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, there was a lot of art that you created mm -hmm. around that anniversary. Do you think art can help us see things, remember things? What were you thinking? I just wanted to do something about it. I felt it was an event that was unusual for, for New Orleans, even though we have storms every now and then. It certainly, uh, I think, uh, at Noma, and also Historic New Orleans Collection, they have some of your paintings mm -hmm. to have as a commemoration at that period of time. Well, I'm glad they do. <laughs> yes. I think it's nice to have that uh, uh, recognition as being a legend at, at this point in time. But, but early on, was there a question about whether you could make a living being an artist? Well, I went in the Navy when I was 19 years old. And I was in the Navy four years. And when I got out, of course, I was 23. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do in my life. And uh, I, I had met Stella, and uh, finally decided I would go to John McCrae Art School. So I went to John McCrae's for two years, and when I got out, I said, well, I better try to make a living if I'm going to do this. So I opened a place on Wall Street, and lo and behold, it worked out what fine. And well, eventually I signed a contract with someone. Who did you sign a contract with? Brian Allen in Jackson. And mm -hmm. of course, he had a gallery here. He had a Jack gallery in Jackson. I think he had one in Atlanta. If you could uh, say what were what are some of your favorite personal favorite paintings? Oh, that's difficult to say. I don't know. I mean, I particularly like that one there and uh, uh, one in there. Uh, I, I just I don't can't say that I have any favorite paintings because I like them. I'll, if I don't like them, I get rid of them. So you get rid of them. <laughs> yes, I do. So, so if uh, one of the areas that uh, the paintings that I especially like are the ones of the Mississippi. Uh, mm -hmm. I think those are just beautiful, and I was trying to show off my little bit of knowledge of art, and it seems that uh, there was a period uh, called Fauvism when Impressionists did in brilliant colors, mm -hmm. uh, and those colors that you have in the Mississippi paintings are just fauvistic, whatever, they're, they're spectacular. Thank, thank right. you. Well, I didn't even know I was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, well, I, I enjoy painting and uh, uh, I try to progress and get better all the time. When you're painting the river like this, do you do each little dot, like yep. pointillism? <laughs> yes, yeah. that's right. So. That's what takes the time to do it. But it gives a good effect. 
Oh, it does. I love it. And what time of day is this, do you think? Late in the day. So you've done different styles through, through the years, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so talk to me about the different styles. Did you, you, you paint in acrylic and oil? And I paint in acrylic and oil and watercolor. And I started out as a watercolor painter. And then I went into working in acrylic and in, in oil. And um, I can't explain why I paint the things that I do. I just see something I like and I paint it. And uh, I try to do it in my own way. Where are these people? Where, what the is people this? People I made up. You made, this is from your imagination? <laughs> I made those up, people up, yeah. I love it. You take photographs? Yes. And I then do. you do it from photographs? Yes. Well, I, initially I would go out and sketch. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, but you know, I'd go out the whole day. Maybe I'd get three, three or four sketches, and and maybe I'd only use a couple of them. I said, you know, I need to use a camera. So then I'd go out and take a, a photographs and things like that. And then I would have them developed and, and work from the photographs, my own photographs. I don't work for anybody else's photographs. I'm partial to roads, as you can tell. <laughs> yeah, roads and uh, roads, cows. And and that's dominoes are pretty interesting. Yeah. And I, I love trains, you know. Mm -hmm. Is this going through a little town where yeah. the where the railroad tracks could be taking you off to someplace exciting? That's right. Um, if I was looking back at some of your highlights of your career, and one was this exhibit you did in Russia. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now uh, talk to me about that. How did that come about? There were some people from Russia who came to New Orleans and visited me in my <clears throat> in my studio, and they asked me if I would like to have a show, and I said, "Well, sure, I would love to." And lo and behold, about a month later, I got a letter from him inviting me to come to Russia and have, a, have an exhibit. So I went there, and it was a very rewarding experience. It really was. Uh, but I wouldn't want to live there. You wouldn't want to live there, no. Not, not but, then. Now, maybe today I would. But at that time, it was still under a lot of control. Did you have an opportunity to see some of the wonderful art collected there? Did yes, you go I to did. The, yeah. We went to every place. We went to to Moscow, of course, and we went to Leningrad, and in those two cities, we went to the museums and visited them. Mm. Amazing art, amazing. Mm. Now, you've also painted in France. I see, I've see. i seen mm -hmm. some of your paintings are, mm -hmm. are the French countryside. I love France. Oh, really is, it, is it your Louisiana heritage? Is that Must it, you be. think? <laughs> Must be. Uh, have you spent a good deal of time there? Uh, I've spent as long as two months there, two and mm -hmm. a half months, and uh, I've done that two or three times. But I, I love France, and I, I have friends over there, I mean, and they speak English, fortunately. <laughs> oh, you haven't ever tried to speak French yourself? I do try to speak French, but I don't, I'm, I'm not, I've, I've forgotten most of it. Now I have to go back and brush up if I go back again. Uh huh, uh huh. I was looking at some of yours, and I don't know, came to uh, Andrew Wyeth, some Andrew of, Wyeth, some of yes. your things. Yes. Are, are akin to his a yes. little. I've seen some of his exhibits. Yeah, I like and, his work uh, very much, and his, his son is very good also. And his son, yes, yeah. as well. Those are um, yeah. awfully nice. Are there, is there a place you would like to go to paint that you haven't been, um, or take some pictures of, or, or are you now enjoying capturing the Louisiana landscape? Well, I enjoy capturing the Louisiana landscape, but I would like to go back to Europe again. I mean, I, I really enjoyed going there. And one of the things that we've looked at is, um, as art is an important part of, of learning in school now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it seems like you, they're always cutting out programs for artists. Or I know. If you, you wish that uh, maybe art would be more involved in our education system. Well, I think it, I think it should be more involved. I think if somebody mm -hmm. wants to study art, they should be able to do that. And uh, I, was, I was fortunate in that I had a father who was very talented. Mm -hmm. And so I got picked up my talent from him there's a whole series, of sort, there's sort of a um, anti-war feel to them. And was it, you, one, I understand you're a Civil War buff. Yes. Tell me about that. Uh, I don't know why, I just am a Civil War buff and uh, I, I enjoy uh, studying the Civil War and, uh, and painting about it also. And uh, I did, I've done a couple of shows that were all around the Civil War. So I don't know why, I just am. Have you traveled to ba battlefields? Or? Yes, I've traveled yes. to the battlefields. I've been to most of the battlefields where the Civil War was fought. What do you think about this uh, destroying Civil War monuments? I think that I don't think they should. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're part of our history, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they should destroy the monument. Why should they destroy? Them? They were put there for a reason. Or some artist created something. Yes, too. that's right. So. Uh, I don't know what New Orleans is going to do, but it has a lot of uh, Civil War memorabilia in it. 
I mm-hmm. hope they don't get rid of it. Looking back over your history, it was interesting to me that Vincent Price collected your paintings. He did. Did you, did you meet him? Yes, I did. He was very nice to me. Was, yeah. it, was he uh, frightening? No, no. No, <laughs> we I, I, well, I don't know. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't afraid of him. Movie. He yeah. came back into my shop and um, he liked my work and all, and we talked for a good while, and he came back two or three times. Do um, you know some of your uh, collectors? Do you keep in touch with them a lot or not? Uh, not too much, no. Uh, if I do, it's through through painting, really, basically. Right. Uh, but I mean, I'm so busy all the time, really. I'm busy painting. Do you think of your paintings as your children, sort of, too, that like, I'd like to keep this one, I'm not gonna put this one for some? Uh, I, I, well, my kids occasionally want something, and if they want it, you know, if it's, unless it's a really important piece, I'll let them have it. But uh, my children, I, I give them paintings, you know, mm-hmm. and they enjoy them. And, but your paintings themselves are sort of like your favorite children as well. And so maybe you would say, I don't want to sell this painting. That's right. Have, have you thought about that? Yes, I have. I have paintings that I don't want to sell. And there, there are a couple in here I don't want to sell, but I'm probably going to be forced to to make a living, you know, because that's how I make my money, selling, well, selling the paintings. Absolutely. Well, um, I especially like, as I said, the, the outdoor scenes, um, but there's some rural scenes in other parts of the country as well. And Well, I've, I've been up to New England quite a bit, and I've mm-hmm. uh, been to Virginia. I love Virginia, and, uh, and of course, all around this area. And so I, I don't try to just do Louisiana scenes. I try to do whatever appeals to me. Mm-hmm. If you look at uh, something and you, you see it, do you see structure in it first before you see color? Well, I, first of all, I don't pick anything that's too complicated because it uh, usually it doesn't work out. But if something uh, has a standout to it, uh, I, 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 I go for that. And I don't paint things uh, relative to Mississippi. Just be, they're in Mississippi, and that's why I do them. Mm-hmm. Is it hard to get light? I always see it's difficult to get light reflected or clouds or water or what's particularly difficult as you're painting? Well, oddly enough, I don't have any trouble with light because I just create the light myself. So if, if there's something, I mean, like I've done things that are like in that one, it's in the evening and uh, I've done things that are in the middle of the day and I always think of the light before I do them. So hmm. I try to, to accomplish that. So, and one of these large paintings, like the one behind us at the cows, how long would that take you to paint? Mm, oh, probably a couple of weeks. Wow, that's pretty fast. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you paint every day, you know, and uh, you can get a lot done. Just start oh, with. nice. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you. Well, it's, it's just beginning. I do drawings first, because uh, uh, I went to John McRae Art School in the French Quarter. And I went there for two years, and uh, the things he taught me are still with me. And uh, he always taught drawing before you do a painting, and that's what I do. Well, I think that's a good instruction for somebody starting out, because I have an awful lot of friends who they retired, and now they're trying to paint. And they'd never done it before, and they're trying to look at something new. Do you you have people that, uh, have you encountered that? Uh, Other people late in life trying to pick Uh, up art? Well, when I was in art school, there were people there who had had never painted or anything in their life, right. and they were trying to learn how to paint. I think all, within us, there's the desire to to create. Yes, yeah, in some and, form. And uh, I think it's necessary to have some talent, you know, to do that. And so mm-hmm. you can't just do it without having any talent. But you, it's surprising how many people have talent in art. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Well, uh, you certainly have become more and more famous recently. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, how is that fame? Has it changed? Your, well, maybe your prices go up. <laughs> well, I have raised my prices some, but I haven't tried to raise them. I mean, I'm interested in selling the paintings, not in keeping them. And, I uh, and so I raised the prices some, but I'm not, if I don't put them out of people's reach, I don't think. I mean, the average person. And uh, there's not much point in that. I, I want to keep painting, and so the more I do, the more, the more I can sell. Do you see people wanting prints now of things rather than the original? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of people can't afford original, and right. so I have some prints made, and there's, there were some in we'll here. We'll look at some. And, uh-huh. uh, and people buy the prints. Yes, they do. And those are reasonable. So if you're yes. a, if you're beginning to collect art, mm-hmm. you might say, "I'll get a print of something." Well, I, I think the most expensive print I have is five hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So all those are three hundred, and and uh, I, I will print usually two hundred fifty of of an image. 
And as I get down toward the end, I'll raise the price a little bit. Right. Uh, is there um, a group of Louisiana artists that get together? Are you in it, or when you were in the French Quarter, did you all gather together? Uh, sometimes at the Bourbon House we would, but <laughs> <laughs> generally <clears throat> uh, artists, I think, tend to be by themselves. And uh, uh, I don't know, maybe if there are artists who gather and get, get together, but I, I never did much like that. I was too busy. Well, have you passed on, uh, you have three children, have you passed on your, any of your talent? They're all talented, but none of them want to do art, which is but, disappointing to me. I was hoping they would want to, well, but they don't want to. Maybe the next generation, you don't I know. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, talk to me about the night uh, that we had the celebration at the Old State Capitol. Was it fun meeting some of the other legends? It was, yes. And I was surprised uh, how many people that were there who were legends. I really was. And I, I enjoyed it. I, didn't, I wasn't nervous at all. I enjoyed it very much. It was fun. I'm so glad because sometimes, as we say, do you think you have to suffer to be a great artist? I used to say to be a poet or to be a f artist or a musician, perhaps you have to suffer. Do you think, do you, or that school of thinking? No, you know? I don't. I don't think you, I mean, if you're suffering being an artist, it's gotta be painful to paint. And uh, I enjoy painting and I, I, don't, I don't think I'm suffering when I do it. I don't, I never have. Well, we love your art. Thank and you. um, I think in every, uh, from the urban landscapes to the Mississippi, to the cows, yes. to the commemoration of the Civil War, yeah. uh, to, um, I think, uh, new horizons for you, just in this beautiful, like the, the tree that's outside, mm -hmm. or um, uh, the grass or anything. I think you can make things as beautiful, and yeah. Well, I, I, those are all kinds of things that I paint, and uh, I never know what I'm gonna do next. <laughs> but that's nice. You get up in the morning and anything well, I mean, can be maybe I have a painting started, so I know what I'm going to do then. But then, you know, uh, yeah, when I finish that painting, I have to go through my sketches and things like that, and I'll decide what I'm going to do next. And I was doing that this morning. Well, Roland, it is such a treat to be with you. Thank you so and, much. And uh, seeing your beautiful paintings here out in the country. Um, it's easier to get here than the French Quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm <laughs> we happy. Love, and we love your family, and we love having you be part of the Louisiana Legends thank Series. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you for joining us for this conversation on Louisiana Legends. <laughs>